Welcome to Mission Independent Baptist Church on our Sunday afternoon service, uh, September 8th, 2024. Had a good day yesterday. I competed in that rodeo with the CTA and uh, seen a lot of old friends and uh, witnessed them about the Lord Jesus Christ and told them about, you know, study your Bible. Get close to Jesus. Jesus will get close to you. And uh, I competed in the tournament and... Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, they said I'm in one of the top three, but I won't know probably till sometime this week. They haven't made the final uh, call who won the tournament for the customer service representatives. But I was able to see Doorbell Carter. I was able to see the president and wish him well and all the other people, uh, my managers, uh, different managers from different line, able to give some people some gospel tracks and uh, tell them about Jesus and uh, did some food. We had Jimmy Donovan come out with us and uh, he supported me. My wife came out and uh, praise God. And after that, we went to the German parade. We handed out tracks in German and English and Spanish. And, uh, you know, we got out all the tracks. Probably 70, 80% of the people didn't take them, but we still got out the tracks we brought with us. So praise God that the word would not come back void. You know, people were drinking. Thank God for the police. The police took tracks and thanked us. And, uh, a soldier was out there, he thanked us, and uh, even some German people. I had some chick tracks in German. I go, you speak German? And they looked, they go, ah, oh, and they just took it. So praise God. May God work his word in their hearts, and may he get all the glory in this. Amen. All right, we're going to sing hymn number 115. God for the people for people of God who want to tell people about Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, we're gonna pick up in Joshua chapter 7. Um, you know, Joshua, his name means Jehovah is his help or Jehovah is Savior. He's the son of Nun out of the tribe of Ephraim, the successor to Moses. He was the leader of the tribe of Israel. He had gotten them across into uh, across the Jordan River. They took him around and walked around Jericho seven times. The walls fell down. They took Rahab the harlot out of there, took her father, mother, her family, her brothers, sisters, and all she had as they promised her, the spies promised her. 
And now God told the people of Israel, the children of Israel, not to take anything away. Don't take anything. Don't take anything of the accursed. Don't take any accursed thing with you out of this. Anything accursed, it'll bring a curse upon you and it'll trouble you. And what did they do? Somebody took something of the accursed thing. And we find out that God talked to Joshua and told them that they're, they're not going to be blessed. They're going to lose. They tried to send men up into the, the city of Ai to conquer it. And they sent a couple thousand men. And the men, when they got to the gate of the city, they didn't get in the city. They got chased down and 36 men lost their lives because God turned his back on them. God wasn't with them at that time because they had sinned against him and God told them. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord, where hast thou all brought this people over Jordan? Deliver us in hand Amorites. So God, God, you know what? He brought them over. God was with them, but they sinned against God. Same with us. When we sin against God, God's not with us in our sin. If we, God will turn his back on us. God, you know, God loves us. God wants to do good for us. God wants us to go on and, and you know, tell people about him. And he wants us to live a a, a, a wonderful life. He wants us to be have you know more, 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 more uh, abundant, abundantly have life more abundantly than anybody. If we live properly, as we keep his commandments and do his will, Amen. But here, the children of Israel didn't do this. Man stole some stuff. So now we're going to go from uh, chapter uh, thirteen to the end of the chapter, the twenty-six of Joshua seven. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I pray. I pray for Miss Lurleen and David and uh, a few other people who are sick. Lord, I pray for your healing hand upon them. Lord, we miss them. We pray that you'd uh, lift them, lift them up, and just heal them, Lord. And I pray for your will in that. And I pray for uh, for Barry and Siri uh, driving back from Tennessee. I pray that you put a hedge of protection on them and uh, uh, keep a hedge of protection around Lila at Vanderbilt University there. And Lord, for. Uh, so many people for Jimmy Donovan. We pray for uh, his soul. We pray for your will in his life. And uh, we pray for uh, Kamari and Erica and the baby. Lord, just bless them and be with them. And uh, for uh, uh, for people, for people at those parades, Lord, we need people. We need, we need, we need to tell people about you. We pray for these people at the parades, the German fest, the Polish fest. And Lord, these people who didn't, who were angry at uh, us hanging out tracks, we know they're not angry against us, they're angry against you. But we need to tell them, we need to shine the light to show them your love, Lord. And I pray, pray for the service, I pray for the Holy Spirit now, I pray for your word to be preached, and I pray that you'd get all the glory in this, in Jesus' precious name, amen. All right, Joshua chapter 7, verse 13 to 26. And it says, Up, sanctify the people, and say, Sanctify yourself against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, There is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, you shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord taketh shall come according to the families thereof. And the family which the Lord shall take shall take shall come by households and the households which the lord shall take shall come man by man and it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire he and all that he hath because he hath transgressed the covenant of the lord and because he hath wrought folly in israel so joshua rose up early in the morning and brought israel by their tribes and the tribe of judah was taken and he brought the family of judah and he took the family of the Zarhites. And he brought the family of the Sarhites man by man, and Zabdi was taken. And he brought his house, household man by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was taken. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to God of Israel, make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment and two hundred shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of fifty shekels weight, then I coveted them and took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers and they ran unto the tent. And behold, it was hid in his tent and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua and unto all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. 
And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and asses and his sheep and tent and all that he had. And they brought them unto the vale of Achar. And Joshua said, What hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned him with fire after they had stoned him with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Achar unto this day. Achar, Achor, Achor, to this day. Uh, thank you, Lord. Just thank you for these, uh, uh, this testimony of uh, children of Israel with Joshua and this man that, you know, we got we to look at this. This man uh, sinned against God, just like we sin against God. But God made a way that we can come back to God through prayer. We can come back in prayer for repentant, with a repentant heart. Our repentant heart, we turn to God and ask him to forgive. And Jesus Christ forgives people of their sins. And if they, if they come and truly repent and truly give it to him, he paid for all the sin on the cross. Here's God angry with the children of Israel. And he said, get the cursed thing out. Get it out. You know, we got to get anything accursed in our life out of our life. Our life is, uh, you know, it's going by. You know, I'm, I'm getting to a point where I'm old now. I'm not young anymore. And you know what? One day I am going to die, but I know where I'm going. I'm going to be with the Lord Jesus Christ, and he paid for my sin. If it wasn't for him, I'd be in hell. I'd be burning. And this is a story similar to this. So let's look at uh, verse 13. It says, oh, sanctify the people. You know what? You got to make yourself right. You got to be right with God, and you got to be right with people. If you do something wrong to somebody, ask them to forgive you. Ask God to forgive you. Have have mercy, repent of your sins, give it to God. It says, thus saith the Lord God of Israel is an accursed thing in the midst of thee. So God told them, there's something, you know, you something accursed. It's not good. You're going to have, you got a curse. God turned his back on Israel. Thou cannot stand before nine enemies. God said, I'm not with you. I turned my back on you. When you fight, you're going to lose until you take away the cursed thing from among you. So once you get it out, he says, I'll be back with you. God never leaves us or forsakes us. But if we're sinning, he's not going to be with us. But if we give him that sin and repent and say, hey, forgive me and truly me, he'll, 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 he took that sin. He'll, he'll accept. God forgives. I mean, if God didn't forgive, I would have been dead a hundred times over. But thank God that Jesus Christ has mercy and grace. And you know what? I put my faith and I repent. I turn, I turn to him. I don't turn to the world. I don't turn to my friends. I turn to God and ask him to forgive me. You know, we got to pray up. We got to clean up ourselves. You know, if something's accursed in our life, we got to get rid of it. You know, we won't be able to exist, stand, remain if God, if we keep the accursed thing. You know, our enemies will destroy us. You know, the people in this world who don't love Jesus Christ, or they know about Jesus, but they don't want to have nothing to do with them. They hate us because we love the Lord and they, they, they hate him. They don't hate me. They hate him. Yesterday we were on hand and People were like giving me smirks and disdain and comments and uh, just, you know, there's there's nothing good. There was nothing good said, but you know what? We were giving out God's word and that's good. And God's word changes people's lives. We were giving out the word of God. We were giving out his word and, uh, you know, that'll change people's lives. We need to get sin out. We got to come clean with the Lord. Look at 1 Colossians 1, 13 to 17. First Colossians one thirteen to seventeen. Hmm? Colossians one thirteen to seventeen. It says, Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son? So you know God changed, you know, we come to Christ, we ask him to forgive our sins. He changes us. We're moved from one place. We're in darkness. Now we're in the light. We're in Jesus Christ in the kingdom of the Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood. His blood cleanses us from all sin, even the forgiveness of sin, who is the image of the invisible creature. 
who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and in invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, by him all things consist. So everything's held together. Everything that's in this world is from God. He made you, me, he made every single thing. And, you know, God wants these people to know they had sin in the camp that they couldn't stand unless they came back to him. God turned his back. He turned his back on them. And he said, hey, sanctify yourself for tomorrow. Get up. So now tomorrow came in the morning in Joshua 7, 14. It says, in the morning, therefore, you shall be brought according to your tribes. And it shall be that the tribe which the Lord shall take it shall come according to to the families thereof, and the family of which the Lord shall take shall come by households, and the households which the Lord shall take shall come man by man. So he said he'll bring one of the tribes of Israel, and then it'll get down to families, and from families it'll get down to households, and then it will get down man by man. You know, tomorrow morning he said, put, put, you know, get the 12 tribes, get the families. Look at uh, Numbers 32:23. Numbers 32:23. He said, a man will be taken out. He'll take out. God will call out who the person is. Numbers 32, 23. You know, we need God every single day, every moment in our lives. There's so much uh, in the world where we're out there. There's so much darkness in the world that it spreads on to us, but our light should push it off, and we should tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. Numbers 32, 23 says, And the land be subdued before the Lord. Then afterward you shall return and be guiltless before the Lord and before Israel, mm -hmm. and this land shall be your... Numbers 32, 23. But if ye will not do so, behold, you shall have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. You know what? The sin of this man, whoever this man is, is going to find them out. They're going through the tribes, through the families, through, through the uh, households, and then by man by man. My sin, your sin. If you have sin, God will it'll find it'll find you out. You know it'll your sin will come. The some men's sins come in this lifetime. Some men's sins come in the next life. But you know what? Your sin will find you out. So tomorrow morning, he said, "Are you gonna? We're gonna find out who this man is." Now in verse fifteen, in Joshua chapter seven in the Bible, and it says, "And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire." So God made a promise here that the person would be burnt with fire, uh, he and all that he hath, because he hath transgressed the covenant of the Lord. You know, in a covenant's an agreement. We have to, if you know, we make a promise to God, you don't want to break that. And because he hath wrought folly in Israel, you said he will be taken with the accursed thing, he will be burnt with fire. It's a picture of hell. It's a picture of hell. In our life now, we have Jesus Christ. It's the same thing. If you don't trust the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be burnt alive with fire. It's a picture, you know, he, he, this man had a wife, he had kids, he had things. You know, he, uh, look at James 4.8. James 4.8. It's a picture of us. We have to stay away from wickedness. It'll destroy us. And people, if they don't come, like yesterday, and people laughing, they won't be laughing on the day of judgment. That's why we have to be witnesses. We have to love people. Because the, the, the hell and the lake of fire was created for the devil and his angels, but people have a free choice, free will. God made a way that God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to pay for their sins for every single person. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But if you don't choose everlasting life and choose to come to Jesus and repent of your sins, you burn in hell and fire and in the lake of fire for all eternity. Be separated from God, not be with God. James 4, 8 says, Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. So we need to draw nigh to God. We need to come close to him in prayer and studying his word and staying in his will. And if anything in our minds gets, uh, anything exalts itself above God or tries to change other against God, we have to cast it down right away. And uh, 
here it says the accursed thing will be taken out in Israel, so it'll be burnt with fire. Uh, you know, transgressed, it's uh, it, it's uh, doing wrong, it's a violation of God's law. You know, if you violate man's law, that's one thing, but if you violate God's law, that's another thing. And, uh, you know, it's a binding agreement, it's a contract with God, it's a... Uh, it's passing over or beyond any law or rule. When you go against God, you can't win. Second Peter three ten. Second Peter three ten. Second Peter three ten. says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. So when the Lord comes, it's coming back when no, you're not going to know. Because when a thief comes into your house, he steals your stuff. You don't know when he came, how he got there, or what. It says, in that, in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. So the whole world, you know, everything's going to burn up. God destroyed the world with a flood one time. The second time, he's going to destroy it with fire. You know, everything will be burnt up. Now, God here told that this man's going to be burnt with fire because he went against his commandments. He transgressed against the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says in verse 16, So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken. So out of the 12 tribes, Judah was taken. You know, a family of Judah, a family of the, the Judah is a family of the Zarhites. It's a branch of Judah, descendants from Zara, the son of Judah. The family of the Zarites, man by man, was taken. And we'll go to verse 17. And he brought the family of Judah, took the family of the Zarites, and he brought the family of the Zarites, man by man, and Zabdi was taken. So he took Zabdi out of his tribe, was taken. He was the grandfather of Achan. So Zabdi uh, means gift of Jehovah. That's what his name means. Zabdi means gift of Jehovah. But, you know, if it's a gift of Jehovah, why would you? Would his son sinned against God here. Verse 18 says, And he brought the household man by man, and Achan, you know, the son of Carmi, or the son of uh, Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah was taken. So he took him. This man was taken. This man was taken. Achan, he's the one that tra transgressed against God here. And it says, And he brought his household man by man. And Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, and of the tribe of Judah, was taken. And now in verse 19, it says, And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to God of Israel. Make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. So, you know, Joshua tells him, man, confess, confess your sins. Like, we're supposed to confess our sin. We're supposed to turn from ourselves and our sin and turn to Jesus, and he changes everything. He, he does the saving. He saves our souls. You know, Joshua said, my son, he said, pray, give glory to the God of Israel. And who's that? That's the Lord Jesus Christ, the God of Israel. He's the Messiah. Give glory to God. Confess your sin. Tell what you did unto God. Don't hide it. You know, don't lie. You know, we, we hide our sins. You know what? People can't, I can see you on the outside, I can't see you. God sees that, he sees all, he sees the heart, he sees the inside of people, and God's the one who, did, he, he makes the judgment, amen? He either saves or he doesn't save if you don't come to him and you hide, you try to hide sin from God, you have 10, ten sins, and you keep one of them and you give them nine, he's not going to save you. It's all or nothing, you got to give it all to him and ask him to forgive you, just give it him, because he paid for it, Jesus Christ paid for that sin, on the cross of Calvary. And in verse 19, it says, Achan, or no, I'm sorry, verse uh, 20. And it says, Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord the God of Israel, and thus, thus I have done. So he said, Yeah, I sinned against the Galard God of Israel, and I've done these things. You know, it didn't sound too repentative. He didn't repent. He didn't get on his knees. He didn't ask for forgiveness. He just said, I did this. He says, I have sinned against the Lord of God, and thus and thus have I done. You know, look at Acts 3.19. You know, we got to confess our sins. Acts 3.19.
Acts 3.19. It says, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. You know, repent. Your sins may be blotted out. So blotted out is erased. God forgives. It's like erased. Your sins you did, it's erased. His blood covers the sins and it erases them. Here, Achan, he just said, yeah, I sinned against him, but he really didn't, uh, you know, cry out and ask for forgiveness. And look at 1 John 1.9. 1 John 1.9. 1 John 1.9. 1 John 1.9. No, we got to confess our sins, even if it's, you know, we know if we know things are wrong, our, our our conscience lets us know when things are wrong. We have to confess our sins to the Lord and ask Him to forgive. First John one nine says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. So, you know, God made a promise. Jesus Christ will forgive you if you if confess your sins. Proverbs twenty eight thirteen. Proverbs 28.13. You know, I used to confess this sin, that sin, and I was like, what? How come it doesn't seem? I confessed all my sin. I gave it all to the Lord. Once you confess all and you give it to him and mean it, it'll save your soul. You got to have your faith in what he did on the cross at Calvary. God raised him from the dead. Believe and put your trust and faith. Repent of your sins. Give it to him. The Lord Jesus Christ paid for it. Look at Proverbs 28, 13. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesses and forsaketh them shall have mercy. So God will have mercy. If you confess your sins and, and you forsake them, don't do them and stay away from them. He has mercy. And look at verse now. 2021. Verse 21 of Joshua 7 in the Bible. This is when I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment. So this guy's seen, I don't know, like a cloak, like a cloak, like a coat, a goodly garment, he said. And uh, he, saw, he saw all the things he wanted. You know what? There's things that I want I shouldn't take because they're ungodly or they're not not pleasing to God. We have to stay away. So it was like a Babylonish garments, and then it says, "In a two hundred shekels of silver." So two hundred shekels of silver is about two thousand dollars, I think, today in 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 the way two hundred shekels, and a wedge of gold, and a wedge of gold of fifty shekels. So fifty shekels of gold is about. Six thousand four hundred and twenty two dollars today. You know, he's he wanted these things in his heart. He wanted these things. He wanted to take them. But he heard that God said, Don't take anything of the accursed thing. This stuff will curse, will put a curse on you. And God turned his back on the children of Israel. They were cursed when he went to fight nigh through thirty six men died because of this man, because of his foolishness of going against God and keeping and not keeping his commandments. And he took he took these things. And he coveted it. And, you know, it's an evil desire. When you want somebody else's things and you see something, it's coveting. And against God, it's not, not his will. Look at Romans 7, 7. We can't covet after other people's things. You know, I see other people, they got nicer cars and things. I don't want them. I have my own. Romans 7, 7. Romans 7, 7 says, What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid, nay. I had not known sin but for, by the law, for I had not known lust, except the Lord said, Thou shalt not covet. So we're not supposed to covet. We're not, to, we're not supposed to love anything more than God. And we're not, we're supposed to listen, keep his commandments. You know, uh, we, can, we can't put anything in front of God. God's first. And, you know, if you're married, your wife, if not your family, if you have kids, you know, in, in that order, you know, you, you have to love God. God first always. The children of Israel, they had laws they were supposed to keep. Thou shalt not covet. They knew that. That was one of the Ten Commandments. That was one of the, on the stones in the Ark of the Covenant. It said, thou shalt not covet. And, you know, this man coveted these things. It was an evil desire for someone else's things, and he took them. 
Look at James 1, 14 and 15. James 1, 14 and 15. You know, be happy, be content with the things you have. You know what? I woke up today. You woke up. You got clothes. You had some food. I had a coffee. Praise God. I had lunch. God is good. God is really good. Does all the time. God is good. James 1, 14 and 15. It says, but every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So, you know, when we see something that looks good or something we want, we, we have lust for it. We have a, a strong desire to get it. Even if God tells us no, or if we study the Bible and we're enticed, we're going to get it no matter what. We can't do that. We have to stay on God's plan. But it says here, but every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed, that when we lust, hath, when lust hath conceived, so when you do the action, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So, you know what? We're all going to die because we all have sin. Jesus Christ had no sin, so he paid for our sin. You know why? Because we couldn't. He paid for our sin, so we couldn't. You know, but, you know, stay away from sin. Stay away from things. You know, this man, now in verse 21, we're going to finish up in... Uh, it says, then I coveted them and took them. So he coveted these things. He took them. And behold, they are hidden in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. So he told where, where this stuff is, but he didn't, he, didn't, he didn't make a, he didn't repent. He didn't repent. He told them the things are there, but he wasn't repenting at all. You got to repent to God. You have to, you have to, you have to stay, stay in God's word. And you know what? You can't. Once you go, if you do something wrong, if you have sin in your life, ask God to forgive you for that sin. He'll forgive you. But here, this man, obviously, he says uh, in verse 21, I coveted them. So he admit, I coveted them and took them. Behold, they are hidden in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. So he said he had the things, I guess, the garment in the tent, the gold in the tent, and the silver was under the tent. So this man, he may he, he confess, but. He, he had sin. He said he was uh, tempted. He was tempted. He wanted these things. He hid them. And it says in verse 22, so Joshua sent messengers. So Joshua sent people to the tent, and I guess to dig underneath it, and they ran into the tent, and behold, it was hid in his tent, and the silver under it. So it was like the man said. It was underneath it. You know, Joshua sent messengers to seek out the matter, and that, the, and that they found the silver under the tent. You know, God seeks out the matter in our lives. We can't, you know what? I can hide my sin from you. You can hide if I have any sin in my life from me, but you can't hide it from God. I can't hide it from God. We got to come clean. You know, we're not perfect. And one day, one day, we're perfect in spirit if you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, you won't have this wicked old flesh to to try to fight you every day to do something sinful. We have to fight against the sin, and we have to stay focused on the Lord Jesus Christ in the Spirit and fight against the flesh. One day we'll have a new body just like Jesus. We'll be made perfect just like him. We will have no sin none. And it says here in verse 22, So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran into the tent. Behold, it was in the tent, and the silver under it. So they sought out the matter. They laid the silver out. And it says, they, and then they took them out of the midst of the tent. So they took everything out and brought them unto Joshua and unto the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. You know, when you lay everything out before the Lord, if you lay out your heart and your sin and you ask him to forgive you, he'll forgive you. Jesus Christ was sent by God the Father to forgive our sins. Here, this man transgressed. He didn't repent, it doesn't look like. And, you know, Joshua sent the messengers to seek it out. They laid the silver, the gold, the Babylon, the the garment, they laid everything out in front of all, all the children of Israel to see. You know, God will take you down in this life. You know what? If you stand for the Lord, you say you stand for him, and you sin, and you sin, and you sin. If you're a child of God, God will spank you, spank you. And if it gets so wicked enough you're doing it, going to, doing in sin, he'll take you home. He doesn't want you to use be used for his holy name. He's holy. We're, we're, we're like the dirt on his feet. We're like a filthy rag to him. We have to, we have to, you know what? We have to stay in his commandments and serve him and not sin. Stay away from sin. Avoid sin. 
Abstain from all appearance of evil, it says in the Bible. So here they, they, they laid everything out before the Lord. They laid the silver, the gold before the Lord, in front of all the children. You know, you know, like James 4.17. Look at James 4.17. That gold, silver was supposed to be for the Lord's treasure. But you know what? When we see people, if we see somebody, uh, they need help, we're supposed to help. You know, we're supposed to help people. These people knew not to take these things because God had a, had, a, he had a covenant with them, the children of Israel. James 4, 7. Actually, 4, 17. I'm sorry, James 4, 17. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So this man, you know, he knew what was to do. They said, don't take anything that cursed thing. If we know, I see somebody when I'm at work and something, somebody falls down the stairs and that, and I see it, and then I can say, oh, well, this, I didn't see it. You know, I saw it. I got to help the person. I see somebody struggling, carrying something. I'm going to help the person. You know why? Because if I don't help them, that's sin unto me. And God knows, God knows what we're supposed to do, and we're supposed to follow what God tells us to do. And if we disobey God, God will destroy us. Amen. If you don't, if you want to keep, you know, people keep sinning. They say they know the Lord. They keep sinning, keep sinning. Now, if they made a, 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 a confession that they've trusted the Lord and they keep sinning and sinning, either one of two things. They've never trusted the Lord or they have trusted the Lord and they're living in the flesh and not in the spirit. And you know what? God's not going to, God's taking people out who are in the spirit, who are saved people because he doesn't want them to be used. This man, Achan now, in verse 23, and they took him out of the midst of the tent and brought him unto Joshua and all the children of Israel and laid him out before the Lord. And in verse 24, and Joshua and all of Israel with them took Achan, Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters and oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tent and all that he had, and they brought them unto the valley of Achar. So they took everything out, you know, they took it all out before the Lord. You know, when we come to the Lord, when you get saved, you got to bow to me. You got to get before Him. You got to give Him everything. It's all or nothing. You got to ask for forgiveness. You got to repent of your sins. You know, God does the saving. He sees the heart. He sees what you're you truly coming to Him for salvation, or you just want you might want you just looking for some help. You're looking to for you want Him to for you. You don't want to you want to forsake those sins. You want to get away from. Them. You don't want Him anymore. He paid for him on the cross for you. He shed his blood to cleanse all those sins. Look at Romans 10, 9. Romans 10, 9. You know, I can't save anybody. Only Jesus can. But you got to come. You got to come with a repentant heart. And ask him and believe what he did on the cross, and that he paid he paid for your sin, and you got to give him it all. It's all or nothing. Romans ten nine says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth on the righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And it says, for for the Scripture says, whosoever believeth on him is not ashamed. We can't be ashamed, you know. People going out, we handed out tracks. I'm not ashamed of lifting up the Lord Jesus Christ. People laughing, mocking. You know what? That's nothing compared to what they did to Christ on the cross before he paid for our sins. They, did, they totally beat him and ripped him and tore his body apart. He was unrecognizable. Look at Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. We gotta lift the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Ephesians two, eight and nine. You gotta repent. You gotta to come to him. You gotta ask him to forgive your sins and mean it. And trust what he did on the cross, and that God raised him from the dead, and put your belief, your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and in him only. Not religion, in Jesus Christ. Ephesians two, eight and nine. It says, For by grace are ye saved through faith. So it's your faith in what he did. And out of ourself, it is the gift of God. God's gift is Jesus Christ to pay for our sins. Not of worth, so that any man should boast. So we can't do anything. I could do all the good things in the world, hand out all the tracts. I could 
help old ladies across the street. I can give money to the poor. You know what? None of that's going to get me to heaven except repenting and turning to Jesus Christ and asking him to forgive my sins. And he will forgive if you mean it from your heart. You know, when we come to Jesus, we have to give him all, all our sin. He paid it all. Don't hang on to it. It isn't worth it. So now we're looking at verse 25 of Joshua 7. And it says, And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? So he had an answer. Why are you troubled us? You went against God. You didn't repent. You didn't turn. You didn't turn. And the Lord, the Lord shall trouble thee this day. So God was going to trouble him. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned him with fire after it stoned him with stones. So you know, he said, why have you troubled us? Why have you done this evil in the sight of the Lord? Why did you bring this trouble today? You know, all Israel stoned them with stones. They burned them with fire. It was a judgment of God upon him. You know, he didn't repent. He didn't ask the God to forgive him. I don't see anywhere in here where he, he just said, yeah, I took the spoils. They were goodly. It looked good. You know, he wanted these things, and it was like he thought it was, you know, no big deal. But God made it a big deal, and God will make it a big deal. If you don't trust him, you'll end up in burning hell. And it says here, all Israel stoned them with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. You know, God, Jesus Christ, can forgive any sin, but you have to ask for it. People, people they'll give them this sin, that sin, but they'll hang on to something deep that they don't want to give up. And you know what? He won't save you till you give it up. You have to give it up. you got to ask him to forgive your sins. You know, America, Chicago, we need to, we need forgiveness in this city, in this country, in the world here. Look at 2 Chronicles 7.14. 2 Chronicles 7.14. You know, his family, his family got stoned and burned, but they got rid of the, the, the ungodly thing out of the camp. They took, he took it out. They took, they, it was taken out of the camp. It was uh, the accursed thing. It was the accursed thing that, you know, he put a curse on Israel. God turned her back, but God said, burn this thing and I'll get it out of the camp and then I'll come back to you and I'll be with you again. Second uh, Chronicles seven fourteen. One second, I've done the wrong page there. Second Chronicles seven fourteen says, And if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn for their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. You know, we gotta pray. We gotta seek God's face, we gotta turn from our wicked ways. You know what? We gotta repent. We gotta turn. You know, God will hear and he'll forgive he'll heal this land. I don't know how many people, you know, it said in the days of uh Noah it said everybody who had was wicked, everything they thought was wicked. So I don't know where we're at now, but you know, it's 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 a it's a tough time in America now. It's uh things aren't looking too uh, bright. But you know what? Jesus Christ is on the throne. Verse twenty six in the last verse of Joshua seven twenty six to end the chapter, and they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So if you go to Israel today or near near I there in Jericho there's a heap of stones, so the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. You know what? God turned. He turned back. He turned back to helping the children of Israel. He, you know what? He said he wouldn't help them until they got this uh, wickedness out of the camp. And this man's fa this man cost his whole family and all their lives. Wherefore, the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor, Achor to this day. So unto this day, it's called the Valley of Achor. That's the name of the place till this day. They piled stones upon him. You know, God turned his fierceness, his anger away. You know, we want God to turn his anger away from this country. You know what? God, you know, people say, God bless America. But how can God bless America with all the abortion and all the wickedness and all the ungodly stuff they're doing? We have to turn from it. We have to turn, turn or burn, America, turn or burn. Romans 6.23. Romans 6.23 It's my last verse. Just like this man Anchon, guy, he cost his whole his life, his family. He didn't repent. He didn't ask God for forgiveness. And he, you know what? God will just, you know what? People who don't trust Jesus Christ, good people don't go to heaven, and bad people go to hell. People who trusted Jesus Christ go to heaven, and people who don't trust Jesus Christ go to hell. You need to trust the Lord Jesus Christ and believe on Him. 
what he did, and what, his, what he did on the cross at Calvary, shedding his blood to cleanse you from all sin. Romans 6, 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. Achan find out it was death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So you know what? This life's going by. Man, my life flashed by so quick. Man, I'm almost 59 now. And you know what? But you know what? I know where I'm going when I die. I'm going to be with the Lord. That is for eternity. That's so many. You know, Pontius Pilate said, what is truth? He looked at Jesus Christ. He looked right at him. The God of God. The God. He could have repented. He could have said, he could have let him go. But he said, what is truth? And then he went back to the Romans, and it, or to the Jews, and they said, oh, we want, we crucify him. Crucify him. He says, I find for what? He says, I find no fault in him. I find nothing wrong with him. But you know what? He was more scared of the world and the people than he was of God. His soul has been in hell for over 2,000 years now. And you know what? Eternity is a long time. Revelation 20.10 says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. That's forever separated from God for eternity. I wish it upon nobody. That's why we got to get out and shine the light of Jesus Christ and tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ, how he died for their sin. You know what? People out there, I, I everybody sin. All sin is wickedness to God. It doesn't matter if it's little sin or big sin. Any sin, anything in this Bible, this holy Bible, God's word, sin is sin, and we have to give it to him. We have to tell people that they need to turn from their sin and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you, Lord, for these words. I pray that we would stay in your word and that we would follow you and just uh, keep your commandments and stay away from sin, Lord. I pray for people who don't know you, that they would come to know you, that they would forgive, that they would bring their sins to you and ask you to forgive them. And I pray that uh, we can reach people and tell people about you, Lord. I pray for uh, Miss Lurleen and David. I pray for healing. I pray for... Uh, uh, Jimmy Donovan, I pray for uh, for Barry and Siri for traveling mercies. I pray for uh, Pastor Harbin. I pray for his recovery and Mrs. Harbin. I pray for Pastor Clark. We love Pastor Clark, and I pray you continue to use him and keep him strong. For Pastor Stiller and his family and their 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 uh, assembly up there, that they could continue in their congregation, continue to serve you and give you all praise and glory. And Lord, I pray for. Uh, us here at Mission Independent Baptist Church, bless us with the people who are here and bless the people who are watching that, that we would see our need to serve you and to tell people about you and shine your light to people. Show them your love, that you truly love them, that you died for them on that cross and you paid with your blood, with your life to pay for our sins and that they come, that you would, God may a way to come back to him for forgiveness of sins through you and I praise you and give you all glory in all in everything we do in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Mm. All right, we're gonna sing him. Three hundred and eighty-nine. Him three hundred and eighty-nine. You know, we get caught up in the muck of this world and get into things we shouldn't and you know it's like crimson red but you know Jesus Christ can make you whiter than snow he can cleanse your heart and make you whiter than snow he can take you away from the sin and the muck of this world and give you life everlasting in heaven with him if you turn turn to him repent of your sins him 389 Lord. 
snow he'll cleanse your heart you know, well, he's the only one who can cleanse it this world can't cleanse nothing it can just keep you deeper in sin and till you till you die you have that promise of God come to him and he'll make you whiter than snow he'll cleanse your heart ask the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive your sins amen uh, praying for Amy Amy for God's will in her life um, Miss Mary Ann, Miss Mary Ann's coming uh, next week, I do believe, that God would give her traveling mercies. And uh, Miss uh, Lurleen and uh, David and uh, the pastor Ron there, all the different people, uh, if they're sick, we pray for healing upon them. Uh, keep them in your prayers. Keep the church there in prayers. I'm not sure what uh, next parade coming up. There's a few parades. And then I uh, think... The, uh, Thanksgiving parade and maybe I don't know what else is there's not many parades left this year um, Pray for Danny. We pray for Danny Jockel in Tennessee that God will have his will in his life And that he would study his Bible and just put his all his faith in you and just guide him and protect him there And uh, Steve Sajak in Texas We love you brother and just uh, continue in the word and trust the Lord Jesus Christ for everything in your life and uh, Mr. Robert here that uh, God would be to show, show himself real to him. And uh, let's pray. Dear Lord, I pray for all these people that we just mentioned, Lord. I pray that you would just bless them and help them with their needs, help them with their illness. Bless them, heal them, Lord, and just uh, keep them close to you, Lord. I pray for uh, Miss Lurleen, Mr. David Scogley, uh, for Pam, uh, for health, for t uh, just for uh, schooling there, the test she has, and just bless them. And uh, all the people who are sick and for the people who don't know you that I know I pray that they would turn they would turn for themselves and turn from the world and turn everything and give it to you give your give their sin to you and that you would save their souls and I pray for people's souls Lord that we'd make a difference that we could tell someone that you died for their soul Lord and that you paid for their sin with your life and that if they come to you that they can be saved and that they would be eternally with you in in heaven for for everlasting forever i praise the i pray praise you and uh i give you all the glory and uh just uh praise and honor and glory to you in jesus precious name amen great is the lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our god in the mountain 
beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion, the side to the north, the city of the great king. Praise God, praise God for Robert on the piano, and Benjamin too, we miss him, we didn't see him, I don't know, what he's visiting his friend uh, in the hospital maybe, and we're praying for him, uh, that God would bless him. He was off the ventilator, and maybe he'll get out of the hospital. God's hands upon him and healing. So uh, praise God, Amen. Just praise God till praise him all week until we come Friday. Uh, we'll see you, Amen. Have a good night.